Hi everyone, hope all of you are well. Thank you so much for your feedback on the lectures. Um, not only was it very um, heartening to see the kind of appreciation that you all um, gave to me in terms of um, the way uh, we are going to go forward, um, but what was also very special was to see that most of you are in agreement that we need to, you know, that need, there needs to be more empathy going forward, that there needs to be a reevaluation of the so-called model uh, that, you know, we follow or we had been following or some of us had been following or some, you know, by, by, by the way, when I use the words us, them, you, it basically has, does have a global conjecture, you know, or global in, insinuation to it, take it. And um, please do not um, uh, forget that um, my core training as an economist will prevail over uh, every um, thing that we basically um, ever dissect. Anything that I manage to teach to you on top of it will be, by, by the way, when I say on top of it, um, I think the one thing because I was going through so this is a notebook that I dedicated to the you know um, to the online uh, um, sessions uh, last year when we had the first lockdown so I have all kinds of okay what was I doing at this time and what what, what should I do for the next class and so I had to reevaluate how to teach and everything and what was very interesting was that behavioral economics was the last topic that I taught and um, Incidentally, this year, behavioral economics is the first topic that I ended up teaching or will, you know, basically we because it will be something that part of me was asking myself that question that why was it that I felt the need to teach it right at the beginning of this year? I think one of the reasons was that video clip that you saw, which was something that I thought, OK, I will teach. But now it is core to the understanding of how markets function, of how um, uh, something that we refer to as economic agents, how we function. All of us are economic agents, by the way. You are economic agents. I am an economic agent. My um, four and a half, nearly four and a half year old is an economic agent simply because he refuses to switch away from the formula milk that, you know, we decided once upon a time that no, our child will have cow and gait and now cow and gait is that one thing that we will probably sell our souls for. I mean, not anymore actually because he started eating. But up until last year, those of you who started with me, you know, have or have ever talked to me about this inelasticity thing. For me, the most inelastic demand for a very long time was cow and gauge and uh, formula milk, by the way. And um, the simple reason for that was the simple reason for that was that I could not switch away from it to another product, although substitutes were available in the market. Now, this brings us to a very interesting thing, which is not part of the curriculum per se, but it is because what I'm trying to do here is to get you to understand how markets function. And what I'm trying to do here is to try to get you to understand that the assumptions that they give to you in the textbook are very, very streamlined and are um, almost beautifully depictive of a very utopic version of events, which is as two dimensional as we can aspire to be. Most of you in your uh, questions that were posed to me asked if the economy is being run in a neoclassical way or if it's being run in a, in a behavioral economics kind of way or what is better and why wasn't it that it wasn't there earlier and so what one thing i appreciated was that without having been taught formally so you know i think everybody go and give yourselves a pat on the back that you managed to figure it out that there is a difference between the two by just having done the reading. Okay, if you hear weird sounds in the back, that's my two billas who are fighting and I just can't get up and, you know, cause apparently they think this is classes for them also. Okay. So, um, no shark. Okay. So at this point, what we end up seeing is that everybody did have an idea that there was a distinction between neoclassicals and the behavioral economists and everybody did kind of figure it out that we are as humans, Forget about the fact that you could take yourself as an economic agent. Okay? We are, as humans, all of us are uh, sort of more, you know, um, inclined to follow the pattern of the way that the behavioral economists would predict. Okay? So here is what I want you to know. The world is not, it's not as if the laws of physics 
are the ones we pick and choose that okay fine this is the law of physics that we will employ today and this is the law of physics that we will employ today i think the same is the case with natural uh, with social sciences which by the way whatever we're studying is part of social sciences because we're talking about something which falls in the context of a society it falls in the context of human anthropology it falls in the context of understanding demographics it falls in the context of understanding um, a basic version of that society which we refer to as an economy where any any transaction that takes place whether it is for money whether it is for transacting goods um, as soon as you bring in the concept of something that we refer to as the opportunity cost or the transfer earnings of you know what is it that you need to keep a particular resource in a particular um context um please note that i am not talking about jobs and salaries and wages and interest rates at this point and it's not like i can't talk about them i can talk about them till you know the cows come home i think that's right yeah but the point is that i want you to understand that some of you even commented that economics has never been this interesting which is fine thank you so much i feel very flattered and my family was saying mama they're just looking for an a which is fine if flattery can get you there as long as you do the work you will get the a okay that is that is flattery and doing the work yeah uh, but doing the work it's not like uh, uh. so the point is i want you to understand that as soon as a decision was made about whether we want to stay in i think all schools of thought believe you know all religious schools of thought <laughs> believe that there was um a version of heaven and that there was adam and eve in it and whatever name we prescribe to them you know whatever version of religion whatever language we use but the one thing that i normally start off with is something that we refer to as diminishing marginal utility and the fact that diminishing marginal utility almost always sets in for those of you who are alien to the concept i'm going to narrate a very small incident my brother um now we are a family my brother has also done econ and he's one of those only people with whom i can talk in economics and um again you might think that we're very nerdy and i am he's probably not as much but um he came over and my eldest at the time he was um maybe one or something and then uh one and a half i think and my brother brought this whole jar of something called smarties which is m&ms um you know Uh, another name for m and m's m and m's came later i think smarties were there earlier and a whole jar and i am a very sugar skeptic person so i was like nahi isko nahi dena and you know you can't give this to him and no this is i regulate his sugar and all of that you know new moms i still do that by the way um but my brother was like let's do a social experiment and we were both sitting on the bed and we gave him the box of smarties and uh, you know the first 20 <laughs> nail just gulped down like nobody's business like he couldn't even appreciate what the flavor was then he kind of slowed down he came up for air and i was like asad my brother this is going to be so weird in the night he's going to have a sugar crash and what not those of you who know what i'm talking about you know you need to really watch your sugar intake and then he'll not know what to do mera kya hoga raat ko soega kaise and all of that But then we noticed something very strange that he just started playing with the smarties like he was just arranging them and then there was a the color coming off and and then lo and behold this little tot this little toddler who had never been exposed to something which for him was heaven so to speak just walked away he left the box of smarties on the bed and he just walked away and my brother goes see diminishing mu sets in it always sets in now that for you is a little bit of question what is diminishing marginal utility and do you believe that it sets in i'm not interested in the fact that whether you believe it or not because it does set in there are hardly very very i mean apart from addictive substances that by default give you utility i mean if you can call it happiness you know so it's a whole area where we call them bad so to speak where the good is that you're consuming is actually a bad so we're not going there but the concept where i'm trying to drill home at this point which is again a very basic concept but if you just understand it i think all of what is to come will become much more easier to grasp so the whole thing rests upon opportunity cost what was it that what is it that prompts us to switch away from one activity to another activity after having done it for 4 hours how many episodes can you watch in one go how many um 
um, pizza slices can you have in one go without deciding that all right you know what maybe I need to kind of switch to something how many times a week can you eat out let us assume there was no financial constraints let us assume there was not even a bodily constraint that, oh how many pizza slices of pizza can I eat let us assume that we are not bothered by the you know by the version that oh no in the longer run because by the way it has been found and as you've seen in the behavioral economics video also human beings um i wouldn't call it suffer from human beings are prone to something that we call myopia we're very sort of in the now we're lot you know if we were all thinking about now acha pause here <laughs> one of you said this to me that ma'am aap thoda sa you know you're going all over and what not but that's the way i teach and the simple reason for that is i do not want you to let go of the thread that is this lecture i don't want ke beech mein se koi kahe ke okay 11th minute pe she has explained it because in order to understand the 11th minute you will have to make sure that you go from 0 to 10 point you know 55 or 59 do you get what i'm saying so i will not change the way i teach because this has worked out for me for years marshal i have just you know i think this is my 21st to 22nd year teaching and this has worked out the key that you need to do is you need to have a notebook when you're uh, listening to my lectures you need to pause you need to write down what i said then you need to understand where i'm headed theek hai again main ek bahut main bahut sare detours leti hu lekin ek dafa ek lafz mein main jab dev padha rahi thi wahan pe again this is like i'm showing off yes i've taught dev economics development economics at lums in their econ department again this is me signaling to you that i know my economics and the reason again being that i want you to know that you know you are buying something which you you know somehow paid for one of the students after about the third week in he never said anything and all of us were like ah oh. and i'm like what and he says ma'am you know what you've reached that point i was like where is she going but you've kind of come back to it and i said thank you so much for staying with me for this time and that's where the whole have faith comes in you've got to stay with me for this process because i know this is this whole notebook i write in it i scribble in it because i want to know where my stream of thought is also going and let's come back to it the concept of behavioral economics versus neoclassical economics what was so beautiful was that all of you whether you copied it or not i know i got some some messages on the side telling me ma'am everybody is sending the same answer that's because you know but that's fine eventually <laughs> by the way all of you will have the same answers If you think somebody is going to come up with something very very new at this point then see me and we could write a paper together and I put my name in front and you get to put your name on the you know wo jo bilkul niche wali so then and then we'll all be rich and famous but please understand that the aim is to actually come up with a consensus also and that consensus could be that there are disagreements along the way and there were very significant disagreements and i cannot tell you one of you actually said maybe you said this in the but my heart was about to kind of burst out of my chest when you were debating whether there were shortages whether there was hoarding whether you were debating the reading that had been given to you for a liberal arts college to have instilled the idea of understanding something in a context i think job done right but what I want to distinguish at this point is that nobody woke up one day and said okay today we will spend our day as behavioral economists or today we will spend our day as marxists or today we will spend our day as a neoclassical what the whole thing entails is a whole school of thought understanding that there are various schools of thought that exist within the study of economy theek hai and um I have said this before and I don't see any reason why I can't say it now on a recorded lecture. It's almost like each school of thought is a certain religious school of thought. Um so much so and the reason for saying it like that is because they really truly believe that their version of events is the only version of events that explains the world. That their version of events is the only version of events that will save us. That their version of events is the only version that we are willing to stick by and we are so staunch in our belief and our assumptions in our preclusions in our conclusions in our hypothesis that we are not going to let go of those and as soon as one person within a certain school of thought or a certain religious you know school of thought mai isko isliye uske sath tantamount kar rahi hu this is not an offense by the way please understand what i'm trying to say that the reason why i'm saying that there is that built in 
I wouldn't say re- rigidity. I'd say that built-in structure within the the conclusions and the assumption is because as soon as someone tries to say something different, the already existing people within already existing thought within that school of paradigm, the paradigm of thought, will actually just say you do not belong with us anymore. You are not a neoclassical. You are not a Keynesian. You are not a classical economist. You are not a Marxist, because you dare to think that hang on there can be an alternate version of events maybe you know uh, not every phenomena is monetary in nature by the way that's the monetarist theek hai maine bahut sari bahut sare words throw out kiye that was to impress all of you also and that was to get you to go and read up on them i have at this point given to you three textbooks one is a microeconomics textbook called pindic it's a very simple read it is there simply because the terminology that i sent to you out there to understand basic economics will be there please read it whenever you need but which or don't read it cover to cover it's there for you as a dictionary you can use the um, you know I, i think if all of you do you have a laptop with you just keep it on like you know these three textbooks should be on your you know in the folder that you used to study for me एंड जब भी कोई वर्ड में बोल रही हूँ जैसे डिमिनिशिंग मार्जिन यूटिलिटी मैंने बोला बजाय गूगल में जाने के जहाँ पे ठीक है देर इट इज़ अ वैलिड सोर्स बट इफ यू आर इन एन एकेडमिक क्लास रूम विच वी आर यू वुड बी यूजिंग अ रिक्वायर्ड टेक्सट बुक सो दिस इज द प्री यू नो प्रिलिमिनरी रीडिंग दैट यू शुड हैव ऑलरेडी डन सो दिस इज माई वर्जन ऑफ अ टेक्स बुक टू यू दैट आई गिवन टू यू ठीक है ओके सो थ्री बुक्स वेरी क्विकली आई एम गुड गो ओवर दैम एंड आई एम टू पॉज दिस एंड कम बैक अगेन बिकॉज दैन यू नो आई डोंट नो हाउ लॉन्ग आई नेवर अपलोडेड अब दिस इतनी लंबी वीडियो तो um, पिंडिक मैंने आपको बता दिया इट्स ऑल अबाउट द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ मार्केट्स एज पर द न्यू क्लासिकल वर्जन ऑफ इवेंट्स बाय द वे वी हैवेंट स्टार्टेड ऑन द स्कूल्स ऑफ थॉट इज येट दैट्स इन द नेक्स्ट बिट द सेकंड टेक्स्ट बुक दैट यू हैव इज समथिंग कॉल्ड मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स बाय मैन क्यू सम पीपल कॉल हिम मैन की आई मीन आई इट्स द फर्स्ट टाइम आई हर्ड इट वॉज मैन क्यू बैक इन माई अंडर ग्रैड हीज ऑलवेज मैन क्यू फॉर मी एंड बाय द वे इट्स नॉट रिचर्ड टू यू इट्स थेलर और यू नो डॉक्टर थेलर I mean, it's you know, it's not Karl, it's Marx. So you know, you don't get to call them by their first name, not until no, you don't. Nobody gets to call them by their first name. Take okay? it. But the fact that you could relate to Richard Taylor is wow. Good job. Okay. Um. So the third textbook, Man Q. Man Q for the macroeconomics is I think any possible topic that we will be doing in macroeconomics will be covered in there. वो मुझे इसलिए पता है क्योंकि मैंने वो बहुत साल पढ़ाई भी है और ख़ुद भी पढ़ी है तो मैं उस मुझे लेकिन कभी ये नहीं पूछना कि मैम वॉट चैप्टर इज इट वॉट बॉक्स इज इट बिकॉज फ्रेंकली स्पीकिंग दैट टू मी इज़ वन ऑफ दोज क्वेश्चन दैट वी जस्ट मेक यू लाइक यू नो आई वि नॉट अप्रीशिएट इट बिकॉज यू नीड टू गो एंड यू नीड टू जस्ट सर्च इट इन देर वन बिकॉज देर कैन बी ऑल काइंड ऑफ एडिशंस एंड वो दो पेजेस इधर हो गए दो पेजेस इधर हो गए टू बिकॉज नाउ बाय दिस एज आई थिंक वी कैन गेट अ डॉक्यूमेंट एंड फिगर आउट हाउ टू स्किम रीड इट ठीक है The third textbook, the for some of you you might find it very advanced, and for some of you you might find it very interesting, is something which um is probably one of the easiest is the only word I can come up at this point, and uh, and one of the most sort of matter of fact textbooks about development economics, um and it is by an author called uh, Tudero, he's a very famous author. and uh by the way when i teach development economics today or is something i do not teach from it is just there for the students i teach because i find that today or has absolutely no nuance to it it's not um, it's mostly it's just stating what the events are it doesn't give you an opinion and i i appreciate an opinion from the author also but most textbooks don't have an opinion so it's just another textbook and the reason for giving it to you was because as some of you pointed out ki hame dusri economies ka experience ka pata chalega um development economics the way it differs from mainstream economics so to speak is the understanding of economies that are not your woh jo two dimensional jinki humne assumption sari li hui hai perfect information perfect perfect market so development economics is relatively new science it's basically emerged when um आपकी जो वर्ल्ड वॉर टू के बाद कॉलोनाइज कॉलोनाइजेशन थोड़ी सी कम हुई कॉलोनीज फ्री होना शुरू हुई जिसमें हम इमर्जिंग इकॉनमीज का कॉन्सेप्ट डिस्कस करते हैं तो हाउ डू द मार्केट्स ऑफ इमर्जिंग इकॉनमीज फंक्शन इज दैट पर्टिकुलर बुक दैट डील्स विद ऑलमोस्ट एवरी थिंग दैट आई बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एनी थिंग अदर दैन दैट आई विल गिव यू द रीडिंग फॉर इट ठीक है ट्रस्ट मी एज फार एज दैट इज कंसर्न बिहेवियर इकोनॉमिक्स हाउ एवर इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ एनी ऑफ दीज बुक्स सो थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम 
uh, and um, yeah so those are the three textbooks let me know if you kind of you know just browse through them please go through them that will really go a long way